This video covers the retest review 10 over systems of equations. So in these problems, on the review and on the retest, we don't care how you solve them as long as you solve them correctly. So you can use whatever method you prefer. I'm going to use whatever methods are best set up. If it's not set up for one, I'm probably going to do matrices because that's what most students prefer. So problem one, I notice my x's are aligned, my y's are aligned, and I have equal answers which means it is set up for matrices. So I can go 3, 1, 4, 2, 12, 4, and then plug that into my calculator. So I'm going to click second matrix, which is the x to the negative 1, scroll to math, scroll up to B for the really rapid equation fixer, and click enter, and then click alpha zoom, on this, I want a 2 by 3, so I make sure 2 and 3 are highlighted, and I click OK. And then I enter my data using the right arrow to scroll to the next empty spaces, or the 0, to fill them all in. And then when I click Enter, I write that I have this answer. 1001 0, 0, 1 means that I have a true solution, and that solution is at the point 4, 0. Problem two, I have an equation here, and then I need to grab an equation from a table. So I go stat edit, and I plug in the numbers like I see them. So I make the table in my calculator look exactly like the table on my paper. And then I click stat, scroll right to calc, Option 4, enter, 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 and the equation from my table is 3x plus 4. So since this one is set up for graphing, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I have 3x plus 4 and 3x plus 4. When I click graph, I notice that I only have one line. It's because they're starting at 4 and they have a slope of 3. And then the second line is exactly on top of that. So when I have two equations that are exactly the same, or I only see one line on the graph, my solution is infinitely many, or all reals, because my graphs are exactly the same. Problem three, I notice that these are x's, y's, and equal answer. And so I can go ahead and use matrices. This one's set up for it. All I have to do is write it down and plug it in. So I have 2, 5, 17, 6, negative 5, and negative 9. So to enter a matrix, I click second matrix, scroll to math, option B, enter, alpha zoom. 2 by 3 is already selected, so I can just click Enter and enter my numbers. And when I click Enter, I'm going to rewrite my solution in case I messed up and can get at least some partial credit maybe, depending on my teacher. But the 1003 reminds me that that is a nice normal solution. And then the 1, 3 on the right side is my solution. Problem 4, again, set up for matrices. I have x, y equals answer. So I have 5 and 4, negative 9 and negative 3, and then negative 3 and 6. So I'm going to plug in to a matrix. Same steps. So if you haven't gathered from this video so far, if you can plug into a matrix, you should be good. Normal solution. So my solution is 3, 2.
problem five, I notice that these are not lined up for matrices, so I need to rearrange this one so that it will match the x, y equals answer. That bottom one is already set up, but the top one is not. So the top equation, I need to move the 2x. Remember, when you move something to another side, it changes signs. And now I can plug in. So again, normal solution, negative 7, negative 15 is my answer. So problem six, um, I have a, they tell me for each of the word problems, set up a system and solve for the value indicated. So if I have eight pins and seven pins, pencils that cost me 337 and five pins and 11 pencils cost me 310 how much pin how much does each pin and pencil cost so remember it's important to define your variables first they are asking me about pins and pencils so those are going to be my variables because that's what they're wanting to know so First info I have is going to be my first equation. Eight pins and seven pencils cost a total of 337. So I'm taking my um, information and putting it into one equation. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the second equation. Five pins, 11 pencils cost 310. And then from here, these are set up for matrices, so I can go ahead and plug that in. So again, if you can make sure you know how to do this, now all you have to do is set it up. So remember, I put in pins, then pencils, so they come out pin, then pencil. So 0, 2, 9 would be for my pins, and 0, 1, 5 would be for the pencils, because they pop out in the same order that I entered them. Problem 7, Timmy has 180 marbles, some plain and some colored. If there are 32 more plain than colored, how many colored marbles does he have? So first, colored is going to be one of my variables because that's what they're asking me about. And then the other information that I see, um, I see some colored. And then I see info about plain and colored. So the plain is going to be my other variable. So if Timmy has 180 marbles, that's going to be a total. He has 180 total. So there are some colored and some plain. Now we don't know how many of each, which is why we have variables. So we write some colored C and some plain P, and that totals to equal 180. Then there are 32 more plain than colored. So there are more plain, so we're going to put plain equals 32 more than, which means plus colored. Now right now the top equation is set up for matrices, one colored, one plain, 180 for the total, but the bottom one is not. So I'm going to move colored to the other side so that they are lined up. So negative 1, positive 1, and 32. It is very important that when you move C, wherever you put C, that it lines up with wherever C was at the beginning 
or that you know where C is. Which one is C? C should be the one with a negative one. And then from here, I'm going to plug in two matrices yet again. So if you notice, so far on this retest review, I've only had to graph one time, and I've used matrices for the rest. So make sure, dang it, make sure you know how to do those matrices. So I get 1, 0, 0, 1, 74, 106. So remember, I put in C, then P, so my answer comes out C, then P. They wanted how many colored, so colored is 74 marbles. Problem eight, they give me a y value for the solution. They tell me y is negative three, and they're asking for x. Now, I've seen two different ways to do this. Um, the first way is to plug in negative three for y and solve for x. But what I've seen most students do is say, hey, this is set up for matrices. I'm going to plug into matrices and see what y equals, which is totally fine. So if that's you, set up the matrix. Make sure you write it out. So if this isn't multiple choice, you can get partial credit maybe if you write it right. And then plug in. So remember, they are asking for x. x was on the left side, so x pops out first. So x is 3. Also, um, something else you can do to remember is they've already given you negative 3, so negative 3 can't be the one that they're asking for because that would literally be the easiest problem ever. Okay, and then the last problem on the retest review, Holt bought a large pizza and a liter of drink for $11, not including tax. If the price of pizza P is 5 more than 3 times the drink D, write the system that could be used to find the cost. Do not solve. So here they're telling us P is pizza. They're literally telling you that. And D is drink. Again, literally telling you that as well. Write your equation. So first equation, we have a large pizza and a liter of drink for $11. 11 is a total. And we don't know how many, or yeah, we do. A is 1, so 1P. One and A liter of drink, so 1D equals P. Remember, once I use info, I can't use it again. So the other info I know is P is 5 more than 3 times D. So P is means equals 3 or 5 more than 3 times D. And that would be how you'd set that problem up.